AI editing just evolved part two. In our last video, we covered the first part of the big fall update, which was color transfer. Today, we are gonna be covering the rest. As a recap, the items that we are gonna cover today are smart search, color masking, the improvements on generative tools, that is Jenny Raised and Expand and so on and so forth, the new film strip in the edit tab, and lastly, the improved catalog navigation. Some of the features are new like color masking and some of the features are improvement on existing elements like the generative tools. Without further ado, I want to get straight into it as it's a lot to cover. Okay, so as promised, here is part two. Two. Now, the first thing that we're going to focus on is Smart Search, and there's nothing that you need to do. It's already built into the software, but what it is, it's AI enhanced searching. So if there's something in particular that you're looking for, now note that this will improve as time goes by, but let me give you an example. We have one, two, three, four, five objects here that have a ring in them. So if I had to go to Smart Search and I search something like ring, and push enter, it says it found six items. Now, one, two, three, four, five, it found all five of the images that had rings on it, and it confused what I can only assume is that ring in the nine as a ring, but still pretty good. Now, we wanna focus on all the images with a mountain, so let's search for mountain. Now, it's found one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine images with a mountain, and comparing, we have one, two, three, four, five, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's found all but one, and the reason that it didn't find this one is because this is more focused on the skyline rather than the mountain that's over there. Now let's give this one more check, and let's make this a hard one and say vine leaf. Now it's searched and it's found three, and one, two, three. Now, this is the only true one that has vine leaves, but still really impressive on how it found it. Now, it's not perfect yet. As I mentioned, it will improve as time goes by, but it's still pretty darn good for where it is now. Next, we go into something called color masking. Now, color masking is part of the layers. Now, in order to actually use this, you need to select an image and go into layers. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this image, we're gonna go into edit, and we are gonna go into layer properties. In layer properties, we go into masking and we choose color. Now, it has to analyze the picture first. Sometimes it takes long, sometimes it's very short depending on the image, but whatever you click on, it's going to save as the color that you're trying to reference. So you can see there, we're trying to reference that pinky purple. Now it's found all those pinky purples that we have there, but now again, this is just layering. Now we can choose the range in which we do this. So the more you apply it, the more freedom it's gonna give on the image to be able to select things that are more like that pinky purple. But as we go down, it's gonna find that color only. So we can see there, it's found that color only and same thing over there. Now, this is not the best image to use for layering, and it's very complex to actually use layering this way, but it can be very effective. So if we apply this full out and we say, go back to the image, we can take the opacity now and adjust the opacity. But now this is an image that we are trying to reference to. So if we go into layers and we select a image, sort of something with a black background so that we can actually see, we can see that we've selected white vignette and let's just delete the duplicate over there. And what we wanna do with this white vignette is we want to decrease or rather increase the opacity so that that color comes through. Now, as you can see, again, this is not the perfect image, but it has created something pretty cool. And as an example, what I did with one of the images that I've created is I've gone to, well, let's go to this image over here. Now, passing this several times through the color masking, I was able to remove the sky because it was following a couple of blue colors. I can show the original image there. You can see more gray blue. And what I did was I layered that on top of another image, which is a standard image that you get. It is the overlay from Light Leaks. Now, what I did was I applied that and we can see if I take the opacity back to zero, that is the image or area that it was trying to fill. So again, this masking can be extremely complex and it's gonna take a while to master it, but if you do master it and you are used to doing layers, it can be something that is extremely beneficial in your Luminar experience. Next is the improvement on generative tools. So these are the tools on the right-hand side. We have Generase, GenSwap, and 
gen expand. Let's use this image as an example and let's go in to gen erase. Now there might be something in this image that is bothering you and you can see here there are whiffs of smoke over here so I'm going to make this tool a little bit smaller and I'm going to take those whiffs of smoke out as well as a pixelation there, a dot there and a dot there and let's erase those and blend them into the background. Now we can see that's almost a perfect erasure. We do have slight outlining of where we erased, but it's still pretty good. And no one's really gonna notice it because it's not the subject focal matter of this image. Where it is gonna struggle a little bit more, and now we're gonna see how the tool has improved is in erasing this wine glass. Now I do suggest doing this in two parts because we do have two different backgrounds over here, and it might try and blend those in to each other. Now we can see that wine glass has been basically perfectly taken away and it does fall into the pattern, but we still want to get rid of the stem. Now, rather than doing too much of the stem, we are going to come focus right in here to try and avoid blotching. We're going to take that stem and cut it almost perfectly. Just make sure that we get those little shadows over there. Remember in this less is more. So you want to get the finer details in order for the software to do its thing. And we have a far better erase here and we don't see as much smudging because we were more selective of what we were trying to erase. We will also see improvements in gen swap. Now we've targeted that whole wine glass and what do we want to see here? I want to say white wine in glass. And we can see there it's perfectly swapped the red wine for white wine. So a lot of improvements have been made to gen swap, which is like honestly just fantastic. And I wasn't expecting to see it this good. Lastly, we've got the improvements made to gen expand. Now this is a very difficult tool because what we're trying to do is artificially blow up the image. So if we drag this out, we want to see basically more of what's going on over here on the sides over here, at the top over here, and on this left side over here. And we wanna expand it by artificially saying what we wanna see there. So this may not be perfect for actually trying to enhance an image, but it could be better for creating a border. So what do we wanna see here? Well, we can say nothing and just say expand and see what it does. And honestly, really fantastic job. We can see that it's expanded. We do have a slight issue here where it's replicated a bulb, but we can see there it's expanded the cables. It's expanded the wall over there. It has created a glare effect. But if we try and see what the original image was, we can see that it's even created a electric node for that light at the top there. Now we saw how well it did with Gen Expand, just letting it do its thing, and it did a really good job. But you can actually expand, and it's recommended to do one border and incrementally at a time, and you can put a description here, and it will automatically put what you put in there into that image. Now note that you do need to be a little bit realistic. You don't wanna say, okay, now I want to see clowns, because you're not gonna see clowns in the bottom of an image there. So just help the AI by being realistic. Another addition in the big full update was the addition of a film strip. Now, if you select any image in your catalog and then go into edit, you will see a little icon at the bottom with a little up arrow. Now, if you click on that up arrow, you will see a film strip at the bottom. Now, what this allows you to do is to quickly or easily access other photos in your catalog without having to navigate back into the catalog. So a really quick and easy feature allowing you to be able to switch images on the fly. And lastly, we've got better catalog navigation where we can go here to the top where we can see obviously the date range. If we click on all photos, we can now search by the camera, the actual device. So we got an iPhone, we have got a Huawei, and then we got the Nikon Z62. We can even go to the focal length, we can go to ISO, aperture, shutter speed, or file format. So this will help you definitely if you filmed a lot of things with one camera or rather took images with one camera and you just wanna find that camera, we can say, okay, cool. I just want things that were shot with the Z62 and then it'll say, okay, these are the images that were shot with the Z62, which is really cool and this will improve as time goes by. So as you can see, some really cool things that have been added to the software and improved on the software for the user experience. And welcome back. Those are the features 
features you can look forward to in this update. As always, if you do have any questions, please ask. I do prefer for them to be on social media if you can ask there, but you can use the comment section below. It's just a little bit hard for me to track. Once I've actually replied to something, I only see notifications for new things, but you can put it down here too. Now, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe as your support is invaluable. Thanks guys, cheers.